to be honest, Tony, I think they'll be looking at it as a normal test match. Now, it is a, it is a, you know, they do, they do not want to get beat five nil. Um, I've been in this situation twice. Once we managed to win in, in Sydney in 2003, but then obviously when we lost five nil in 07. It is, it's, it, it's a nervous time, but I would imagine they'll be, they'll be, they'll not be hitting any more balls, catching any more balls than, than they normally would for a normal Ashes Test match. They'll just be hoping that they can um, get off to a, a good start. And if they get off to a good start and build momentum, that they get things going their way and, and hopefully not have a 5-0 um, a whitewash. What is different is this talk of three changes, Borthwick, Balance and Ranking, we're told, perhaps coming in for Panasar, Carberry and Bresnan. What are the dangers of handing three players debuts in this Test match? To be honest, at 4-0, there's not much. I don't think there's any danger in it. I think it, it can only benefit to refresh and change. Um, now, the, 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 three, the three characters that are going in, I know two of them in Balance and Borthwick, um, and they're both you know, larger-than-life characters who will... I think both of them have got the right temperament to go and enjoy international cricket. Um, and to be fair, what have England got to lose? Uh, I remember in 2002-03, I, uh, I went to Australia playing against the best team in the world and left there, having played four out of the five test matches. And I left that tour thinking, I, I've played against the best. You know, the, the rest, you know, the rest, when I come back home, I, I, can't get any, I can't get any tougher than what I've just experienced. So them three lads are talking in you know, baptism, baptism of fire. But I'm sure they'll go and enjoy it. I'm sure they'll be told by the management staff and the captain, taking the pressure off them as much as they possibly can and, and go in and express themselves as much as they can in what is a very, very tough enjoy, uh, an environment. But like Ben Stokes has shown and Joe Root before him early in, in, our, in our summer, that you know, this is, this is a, a big stage to play and a big stage to enjoy. And them two have gone and proved that they can play at an international level. Hopefully these three can do the same if they're selected um, tomorrow morning. Well, Steve, tell us about your Durham teammate, Scott Borthwick. Give us England fans something to be hopeful for, something to look forward to. What sort of players do they have on their hands? Well, they've got a, a fantastic all-round cricketer. Um, he, was, he was sort of hampered a little bit at the start of last season. Bowling at Durham and bowling spin. One, to be a leg spinner, it's very, very cold in the northeast, so it becomes very difficult um, to grip the ball early in the season. Pitches at Durham are predominantly seamer friendly, so you don't, you don't get many opportunities to bowl. But the one thing he's do, he'd have done uh, last year, the, I mean, a conscious effort, pushed him up to number three, made his all-round game uh, a, a bit different, and he now is a, a very, very good package. My only worry is that he hasn't bowled a great deal in the last sort of seven or eight months. But... At the end of the day, if they're going to give him a test cap, it means he's bowling half decent in the nets. And the one thing he is always up for the fight. You know, I, I, I see sometimes in 2020 cricket, especially the slow bowlers, is the ones that really, the, the ones that stand, stand out are the ones that have got a good temperament, that don't panic, they're nice and calm in, in pressure situations. There's nothing more pressured to situation than going in at Sydney. Uh, staring down a barrel of a 5-0. So what you've got there is a kid, for me, who, who will enjoy... You will always see a smile on his face. You'll always see him with lots, lots of energy and enthusiasm and he'll bounce around that, you know, the, in and around the field. And hopefully he gets off to a good start with a ball because if he does, then it's a bit different, the off-spin, leg-spin attacking. You know, there's, the, there's obviously the, the, the ball can turn both ways, so it makes it harder for a batsman to, to attack which means Scott has got a bit more of a chance if Australia, which I would imagine they would, if they go really hard at him early on. Right, well, that all sounds very positive. Now, are you surprised that it's taken four test matches since the Gabba for England to possibly select another of these three tall, fast bowlers that have been travelling around Australia? Well, it doesn't surprise me that they haven't, they haven't used them because, you know, I, I was sitting in, a, I was sitting in, a, in England in a, in a studio 10,000 miles away. We don't know the ins and outs why Boy Rankin, Stephen Finn and Chris Tremlin haven't played a lot, uh, a lot in, this, in this series. One of the factors is they might not be bowling well enough. They might not be showing enough um, sort of knocking on the door and during nets and saying to the captain, look at me, I want to play. I want to play for England. And that's the difference. If you really want to play for England, you make your, your feelings known and you have to do that by performance in the nets. You have to make sure that you, <clears throat> you're doing your job properly and when you, when you get a chance to be given the call, you take that chance. Now, England haven't had the chance to do that and the only thing I can assume is they're not bowling well enough. 
But at the end of the day, they've got the three lads over there. They've really now in a no-lose. So for me, they're in a no-lose situation. You know, they, they can't lose whatever whatever happens here. You've given you've given three lads a chance to make a Test match debut, and Boyd Rankin hopefully. He can show England the faith that the, the selectors put in them by selecting them in the first place. And hopefully he, he enjoys what will be a memorable occasion if he gets his debut in the morning. And just on ranking, what have you made of him? What's he like as a fast bowler? Does he have what it takes, do you think? Well, he's a big lad. Um, and normally, normally where you, you see the morning Morkels, who, uh, who's just a sort of bowl really well against India, the big tall bowlers have got something special. They've got that X factor that you want them to, to sort of give your side now. On that aspect, you know, the only thing with Boyd Rankin that I've seen is that maybe he's not durable enough. You know, his, his first spell, is, for me, in Test Match cricket, as a Test Match international bowler, your fourth spell or the, the sort of second day, if you have to come and bowl into the second day if you, if you bowl first, that has got to be the same or marginally as good as what your first spell is. And that's the only thing I think the England selectors or the management as maybe he's looking at Boyd is because he's played a lot of one-day cricket in his career, he hasn't bowled the volume of 25, 30 overs in an innings. And I think his third and fourth and fifth spell has to be up there with his first one. And I think that's the only concern I've got with, with them playing Boyd Rankin. I'm not sure what's happened to Stephen Finn because you know, the big lad excited me every time I've seen him bowl. Um, he did well at Trent Bridge at the start of the, the summer. And then all of a sudden he's gone, he seems to have gone off the ball and have moved aside. But whoever England choose, you know, the, if they go down three debutants, it's got to be, a, you know, people have got to now look at England and think, right, give the kids a chance, give the lads a chance to enjoy what they've got. Because, you know, Michael Carberry's not going to, if he's not going to play in this game, they've tried going down that road. You've got young lads in there and hopefully... Two or two or even hopefully all three of these lads will take head what Ben Stokes and what Joe Root's done and grasp the chance in international cricket at an early age and prove to people that we can play, I can play for England and hopefully these three can do that. Gary Valance is the other one that we're told is going to come in. I mean, the problem is with enjoying it. If it goes the way of the first four tests, it's not very enjoyable when you're being hammered by the Aussies, is it? It's not, no, but you know, this, is, this is why they're making three changes. You know, they're making three changes because we haven't done very well. You know, we're giving three lads a chance to make their international debut. Hopefully that little bit of ref sort of refresh you know, refreshness of the, of the minds, the thoughts and you know, the enthusiasm three lads will give. When you make your debut, you, know, you feel as though you're walking on water. You can go and do anything. You know, hopefully these three young lads will just sort of give you know, the older ones that are, that are you know, going to play with them a little bit more of a, a buzz, a little bit more of a, a feel-good factor. And like I said, whatever they do, if they, if they start well, they've just got to get building blocks again. If they're going to give three, lads a, 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 a three new lads a game, they've got to understand that they're building something for maybe you know, later on in the, in the winter, for the start of next summer, and this is the way we're going to go. And hopefully they can do that by you know, starting well at Sydney first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah, let's hope they can. Um, just before you go, Alistair Cook and Andy Flowers say they're determined to continue in their roles. Do you think that's the right thing right now for English cricket? For me, it's 100%. Yeah, I think... I don't think there's anybody can captain England other than Alistair Cook at this minute in time for England. Um, Alistair Cook has just won Captain of the Year for the last, year, for the last, last calendar year. Now, he's not a bad captain for me. Uh, it's the first time... I think it's the first time any England captain in the last four or five years hasn't had, hadn't, hasn't had a slow bowler to control the game. And I think that's where Alistair Cook has maybe come up short this, um, in this series that he's maybe struggled because he's not been in this position before. He's not had to look at just two bowlers doing the job for him. You know, in, in, in the past, likes of you know, Warren and Ponton, two of the most, you know, for record-wise, excellent captains in, in stats. They threw the ball to Warren, threw the ball to McGrath, and they controlled the game. Where over in Australia... Every time Alistair Cook, rightly so, threw the ball to Cook, uh, to Swan or to, to Jimmy Anderson, the Aussies had their number. And all of a sudden, he's got to think something else. And does he trust these other bowlers? I think that's why you're probably going to see Borthwick playing. So for me, I, I believe Alistair Cook will still be England captain. I hope Andy Flower will be, still be coach because I've got a lot of respect for Andy and I think what he's done for English cricket has been great. But I, I, I sense that he might not carry on after this. And I think that will be Andy's, 
and he's doing. I hope he does, but I, I, I sense that they might be moving forward in a, in a different direction. And I, I just hope that you now people will give Andy Flower, if he does go, give him credit for what he's done to this England team since he took over um, all about six, seven years ago.